In the last episode, we finally entered the Tombs of Amasket. If you haven't seen that video yet, please watch that one before this one because it explains how I do the raid on a Desert Locked account and will make sure that you don't get any spoilers. In that video, I laid out the plan for how we're going to be doing raids. Essentially starting out by doing entry modes until we get Osmumpton's Fang. Then we use that upgrade to start doing normal modes where we can start grinding out more purples, and then we can use those upgrades to hopefully end off with a solo extra mode KC, a pet, and whatever else I decide to go for. We finished off the last video with getting our first purple, which was... The Lightbearer at 88 entry mode KC. Every time I get a purple in entry mode, it's essentially a coin flip whether I get the ring or the fang, and I lost that coin flip. I told myself, however, that I wasn't going to be upset for getting the ring first because that just means that when I get the fang, I'll be able to use its special attack way more often. And if I get a second ring before a fang, then I'm allowed to complain. Here's my full collection log at 88 KC in case you wanted to see where we're starting off. And now I think it's time to get back into the raid. Oh yeah, and this video is sponsored. What is up gamers? As RuneScape players, I know you don't want to waste time where you could be getting XP, and that's where today's sponsor, Factor, comes in. Factor is a service that sends fresh, fully prepped food right to your door. Personally, I prefer cooking at home over ordering takeout, but it can get kind of stressful with all the planning, the grocery shopping, and the mess that comes from cooking. Factor takes the convenience of ordering out, but gives you healthy meals that feel like they were made at home. Let's check out the website and see some of the options that are available this week. Alright, so this is a live reaction to all of the food that they have available for this week on Factor. Let's see, we got some herb crusted chicken with mashed cauliflower and toasted almond green beans. That looks super good. First one right off the bat looks amazing. Plenty of keto and protein options for people. Creamy parmesan chicken, delicious. Louisiana shrimp, oh my god, that looks so good. This all looks so good, man. I'm over here getting excited about food, but you know, this stuff's all healthy, so there's no need to be ashamed of that. Yeah, that was just the stuff available this week. They also have a ton of add-ons that you can add, stuff like smoothies, little breakfast options, you know, just stuff to get you going in the day. This is a game changer, honestly. You'll like always have something to snack on or to eat if you're feeling hungry. So if you'd like to get yourself some of these delicious looking meals sent your way and help support the channel, use my link or go to go.factor75.com and use code POGEXTRAKEENFEB50 for 50% off your first box. Thanks to Factor for sponsoring this video and let's get back into it. There is KC number 90 for entry mode TOA and we get a white light. Decent loot I suppose, money for the main and manta rays for the next raid. And here's 91 KC for another white light. Man, I miss seeing that purple. I miss it so much. And we get nothing. And that was a new PB on both fronts. That was a really fast PB, my God. I think my last personal best was like 45 minutes or something. This was like under 44 minutes, so that was pretty crazy. 92 KC, halfway to 99. Are we gonna get another purple? But or not. All right. There's 93 KC, fully not expecting a purple this raid. You can probably tell by the fact that I have Honey locusts in my inventory and the fact this raid took almost an hour that I did die. I made it all the way to the very last phase of Akka and ended up dying to the, the white balls. You guys know how it is. So um, not expecting to see a purple, but ah uh, man. The game didn't feel like surprising me today. Pet roll, never lucky. So after getting the ring, I had my mind set on getting another purple. I was so focused, in fact, that I kind of forgot I was a content creator who needs to record engaging clips for the video, and just ended up recording a ton of clips of me just finishing the raid for each KC. So here's a bit of a montage on screen of some KC flying by. So I was in the middle of the monkey waves, and I didn't know this level was coming, but we just got, where is it, 94 range. I'll throw a screenshot up of the level, but uh, yeah. 94 range, that's kind of cool. I think we started out doing TOA at 92. So we've already gotten two levels just from the entry modes we've been doing, which is pretty insane. All right, we're just waiting on one more hit. Come on, something, there we go. That is 100 entry mode cases. <laughs> oh my God, that might not seem like a pretty big accomplishment, but each one of these takes like about an hour as far as like the actual raid time with the prep and everything. So that's like a hundred hours of raiding already. And all we have is a useless ring to show for it at the moment. So I would really like to get another purple. This one is not a purple, okay. Would have been cool to get the fang right here and just, you know, finish off at a hundred KC even. Never do another entry mode again, no pet. Absolutely scammed. 
Um, I'm running out of ammo, like mithril bolts and arrows and stuff, so I'm gonna leave it at 100 for a minute and go back to Locust Riders for a day or two. All right, so I just took a break for a couple days to go grind out some Locust Riders, like I said, as you can see by the gigantic stacks of bolts that we have. But this is our first raid back in like a week. Uh, 101 KC for the no purple. There's the loot, nothing to say about it. I'll take these and trash these and we are on our way. All right, this is probably a weird time for this, but we got something really big happening in a second here in like one more hit. Oh, there it is. Oh my God, it skipped right past it. I got hit right at the wrong. We got 99 attack. We got 99 attack on Dune Lord. There's one more 99 down. I wish it wasn't in the middle of this fight, but you know what? There it is. I think we started out at level 96 when I started raiding. So we got 96, 97, 98, and 99, all from just doing entry mode raids. So I guess we're gonna switch this over to defensive now because defense is the only melee skill that we still have left to go to 99. And then maybe by the time we're all done with raids on this account, we'll have max level melee stats. KC 107, and we get no purple and no pet either. KC 108 at the tombs of a mascot. No purple. I'm running out of ways to say no purple and also no pet. And right after that last raid, what do we have here? A lucky impling. Do not cross the water again. I don't have the run energy for it. Oh my God, whatever it was, it wasn't very useful because we already had it in our inventory. According to the loot tracker, it was 795 coins. So, <laughs> you know, 795 coins, 10 mil bounty. I think that's an even trade off, right? Hey, oh, it's our first ever duplicate jewel. That's kind of cool. I suppose I'll take that. Hello, everybody. Can you tell that something's a bit different with the screen from the last few clips? I decided to go back to fixed mode and that is because I just got a new monitor and it's way bigger and everything is just scaled differently to where the fixed client is like, it's a decent size. So I just feel like I'm gonna go back to this. Yeah, I know it's probably gonna be a little jarring to just go from resizable back to fixed, but this is where we're gonna be. And I also think I'm gonna do one more thing cause it's been kind of bothering me. The Rune Crossbow Ornament Kit. It was a bit controversial when I decided to get it because, you know, I had to make the exception to leave and go grab it from like the league or whatever, but it also has this like horrible clipping issue with it that I'm sure you've seen in the videos. Look at that. It's like stuck to the little corner of the pants over here. And it's like when I move, it's just, it's just bad. Um, and I've just grown to not like it. So what I'm going to end up doing is I think I'm just going to get rid of the ornament kit just like that. So now we got the regular rune crossbow and I don't know. I just think it's kind of cool. It's an iconic look. The ornament kit was cool, but yeah, there we are. So in the last episode of Tombs of a Masket, I pretty much just showed off all of like the main mechanics of the bosses and like how I fight all the bosses. Oh, I'm gonna hit here. Oh God, that wasn't meant to be part of the clip, but there it is. Um, but in this video, I wanna show off some of the more subtle things that I don't normally show off. For example, every time I'm done killing one of the guardians, I just kind of stand in place and prayer flick to conserve prayer like you kind of just saw. I'll put up a clip of me doing it. But that's pretty much because after I kill the guardians, there's not really any way that I can kill the swarms fast enough to where like they don't always heal the boss to full. So it's kind of more beneficial for me to just stand in place and maintain prayer by one tick flicking than to, you know, worry about killing the scarab swarms. So that's one of the things I do is I just don't really kill those at all. And I just stand in place and conserve prayer. Speaking of um, little subtleties that I didn't show off in the last video, there is a way to get like a really fast Path of Krondis puzzle. And I'm gonna try and do it right here, we'll see. You just run straight over and get that. The goal is to have the tree watered two times before any of the crocodiles munch it. There we go, 38 seconds. I didn't need to kill any of the crocodiles because I was so freaking fast. Here's another trick that I'm sure a lot of people already know, but I'm gonna show it off anyway. 
With the Partisan of the Sun spec, when these red skulls come out, this is a great way to heal up because, you know, whenever you kill an enemy, it gives you some health. And uh, since those things are one hit, they're pretty easy to heal up on. So not incredibly useful for entry mode because I don't take a ton of damage anyway. But, you know, when I started doing normal modes, that's going to help out a lot. Also, this is my first raid doing fixed mode, and it's hard to see some certain things compared to resizable mode, but I don't know. I just like the way fixed mode looks a lot more, so I'll just get used to it. There's 134 KC, and we get another white light. And from the chest, oh my god, another jewel of the sun. Okay, obviously no need for that, but that's going to be a nice 180k out. That's the only one I've gotten duplicates of, apparently. Three of those and uh, one of the other two. All right, everybody. I have made some changes to the invocations that we're doing. So I was doing raid level 60s for almost every single raid that I've done so far on the account. I've done a couple level 100s. I've done a couple 70s, 80s, whatever. But 60 seemed like it was the best balance of uh, raid level to do as far as like the amount of raids I can complete per hour compared to like how common purples are and all that stuff. But I decided that it's just too brain dead to do level 60s. It's just too easy. I want a bit more of a challenge. So I'm bumping the raid level up to 110. The raids are gonna be a lot slower, but I think that, um, you know, it'll keep me more engaged and the purple chance does go up slightly. So what we did is instead of softcore run where we have three lives, we have hardcore run where we have only one life because I don't really die too often anymore. I put on aerial assault and blowing mud for Kefri. These are pretty easy. Not just ahead and blood thinner, so Zebak now has blood magic, and uh, yeah, that's it. So we're doing raid level 110, and let's see how it goes. So this is probably the biggest change to uh, the Kefri fight for doing the higher raid level is I'm using aerial assault, which makes the fireballs that it shoots at me go into three by three pattern instead of just a one pattern. So it's pretty easy to dodge, I think. It actually is probably easier to dodge because I can see. A lot easier when there's like a whole cluster of shadows around me rather than just the one under my feet. That's the main change to the setup. So I'm gonna hop into the Zebak fight and try and show off the two invocations I turned on with like the blood magic and all that. Oh my god, right off the bat with the 100 though. I've been using the ruby bolts for like the first couple hits on a Zebak and like wardens. Oh my god, another 100, let's go. <laughs> just because that can happen, you know? There was some blood magic, and it didn't affect us because we were already praying protect from mage. So if it catches us off prayer, it's probably going to hit us, but half the time we're praying mage, so I think we're fine. Oh, and here come the blood spawns. We pretty much just have to run away from them, and eventually they'll be dead, so not too big a deal. It can get probably pretty annoying when I have to like run around and dodge these other mechanics, but it makes this fight more engaging and less brain dead, because I was just getting kind of tired of doing these super easy raids. Oh no, I ran out of prayer! I ran out of prayer right at the end. I didn't do enough damage to kill it. And it's my first time doing hardcore run too. That fucking sucks, dude. Whatever, it's fine. I'm actually like struggling to do the raid again, which I haven't felt in a while, so I'm excited. It is time for my revenge against Zebek. We're gonna try this out again. I don't really know what I'm gonna do differently. I'm just gonna, you know, hope for the best. And there we go. We have our revenge on Zebek. Five and a half minute fight though. Another thing to address is in the Akka fight, I use Water Wave against him, but I don't have it set to auto cast. And a lot of people in the Twitch stream ask me why I have it that way. And that is because, hold on, let me, live commentary, you know, I gotta dodge all these. That is because the Tome of Water acts as my source of water runes. So in order to have Water Wave selected as like my quick spell, whatever it's called, the auto cast, I need to have the Tome of Water equipped at all times. And if I take it off in the wrong way, then it'll like deselect the auto cast and I won't have anything selected, which is super inconvenient. So I'd rather just have Air Wave or Wind Wave selected as my auto cast and then manually click Water Wave because then if it, at least if I mess up the quick thing, I'll still have one thing to, I don't know if that makes sense, but people have used the Tome of Fire, or the Tome of Water, you all know exactly what I'm saying. Oh God, so, I said Baba was inconsistent at 60 raid level in the last video. At raid level 110, this is a pretty tough fight. <laughs> Baba hits, dare I say, like a truck, through prayer. I've been eating a ton of food. I've already used a, a sun spec, sun partisan spec, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we have a ton of food left over, but that was not an easy fight. It took a long time. But either way, we're heading over to Wardens in a 110 raid level. We are starting phase two 
of the Warden's fight, and like I said earlier when I decided to switch the raid level up, I have already done like a raid level 100. So this is the highest I've ever done at raid level 110, but the biggest problem with doing higher than a raid level 60 is that the Warden's fight, like this phase, it goes from having to do the core phase four times to five times, which is really annoying and really makes the fight last a lot longer. But like I said, it's more engaging, it's more fun, and also I'm doing more damage towards the boss, which might increase my points and therefore my chance to get a purple, so. And here is one, two, three, four, and five core downs ridiculously long and the thing that sucks even more is the very last phase i have to do magic on which is way slower than range so anyway last phase i used two ambrosia doses and a sun spec so far oh god and i finally got it. <laughs> that was intense that was very intense now that was a challenge that was the challenge i'm looking for doing a 110 in desert only gear was not easy so, let's see if we're rewarded with a beautiful purple light. And the reveal in three, two, one. Ah, oh, it's white. SMH. It's a pretty bad chest, too. Okay, there we go. 136kc. Very stressful final warden's phase, as always, with these level 110s. The fang would be incredibly nice there because it's so accurate, but we get a white light once again. And from the chest, a cache of runes. You'll love to see it. The real question is, can we get blood runes? Because that's the only thing I want from it. And we do not. Okay. Oh my god. Dude, that is so freaking annoying. Wait a minute. <gasps> I hit Akka like at the very last second as I died. And oh, this is so weird because I have hardcore run on. So like it's supposed to be one death counts as a wipe. But I guess I killed him before I died. So I have a death. And yet, I'm still going in the raid. Well, I think that's a rip to our purple chance because I think... I don't know. I don't know if this affects our points or not. I really don't. But, you know what? I'm not going to complain because we are 31 minutes into the raid and that would suck if that was all for nothing. All right. I'm going to try to tick eat these energy balls. This might be a terrible idea, but I'm going to go for it. Oh my god, I didn't see it! I am such an idiot! <laughs> oh, 46 minutes. No, 46 minutes wasted, bro. So cringe. The energy ball, like, matched the pattern of the skull that was coming out or something, and it was just... <sighs> Why did I think that would be a good idea, man? Why did I think that was going to be a good idea? I have once again changed up my invocations. Wiping in the last raid really messed with my mind a little bit, and I turned off Hardcore Run and went back to Softcore Run because... You know, getting over 40 minutes into a raid and then just having it all be for nothing is kind of cringe. So I'm doing softcore run. I'm not trying to impress anybody with hardcore, especially if I'm pushing higher invocation. Like I could do hardcore run if I was down in like 60 raid level, but since I'm getting like around 100, I'll just stick with softcore. I turned off the Zebak ones because the blood magic I take a lot of damage from and I just don't feel like that's necessary in entry modes to take that much damage since I don't really get that much higher of a purple chance regardless of what raid level I do in entry modes. I did turn on Penetration, which pretty much I think just increases the damage of the Pillar's attacks in Phase 2 of Wardens. I'll leave this one on for now, but I might turn it off later. But yeah, we're doing raid level 90s now because I think that this should be a little more reliable, and I don't think it should change the purple chances too much. There it is, 137kc. We did unfortunately die once to the come phase in Akka, so... That's why the raid is so long, and that's why I'm not going to get a purple right here. Told you, no freaking purple. And we get uh, some manta rays for the next raid. There we go, 138 KC. Hearts up for good luck on this one. And we get a purple! Oh my god, no way, no way, no way, no way! <gasps> Woo, <laughs> baby, let's freaking go! This is so exciting, this is... The first Tombs of a Mask video just dropped today, and I decided to do some braids, and we're freaking here, baby. Let's go. Okay, 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 okay. All right, here we go. Oh, please be the fang. Please have me be done with entry modes. I'm opening it. Let's see what we get. Yes! Yes, let's fucking go, dude! <laughs> 
finally got it. Oh my god, second purple. Oh my god, I can't believe it. It's over. The entry modes are over, baby. Let's freaking go. Fang on the desert locked ultimate Iron Man, baby. Let's freaking go. Oh my god, it actually happened. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> Woo! It finally happened. After hundreds of hours of raiding, we finally got the biggest upgrade the account has ever had. This is probably a good time to talk about the specifics of why this weapon is so useful for me. The short version of it is that the Fang is incredibly accurate. It has a stab accuracy bonus of 105, which is already pretty good, but what makes this weapon great is its two passive abilities. The first one is that when you go to hit an enemy, it does two accuracy rolls to check if you land a shot instead of the normal one. If either of these checks succeed, then you roll a hit. It works slightly differently outside the raid than it does inside the raid, but for most purposes on this account, we'll be using it at TOA, where it's at its most powerful. The second passive effect is how it calculates the damage that it deals. Normally, a weapon rolls if it hits or misses a target, and then after it rolls a successful hit, it can hit anywhere from zero to its max hit. The way the Fang works is after it rolls a successful hit, it can hit anywhere from 15% to 85% of your max hit. So if your max hit is 60, you can hit anywhere from 9 to 51 instead of the normal 0 to 60. On paper, this doesn't change the DPS, but hitting less small hits is super beneficial in this raid. Also, it has a special attack, which uses 25% spec energy, and it makes your next attack 50% more accurate, and also increases the max hit to its true max hit. So again, if your max hit is 60, it'll roll a 5 through 60 instead of the 5 through 51. And with there being so many places in TOA where you always hit your max hit, such as the core at Wardens, the spec is going to be amazing here. The last thing to note about this weapon is that it attacks every 5 ticks instead of every 4. So it's slightly slower than the Dragon Spear, but it hits so much harder and so much more often that it's not even close how much better it is. Oh my god, my hands are shaking so much right now. Look at my mouse. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> it's involuntary. I can't control it. Dune Lord has a fang, baby. Entry modes are over at 138 KC. Never doing another one ever again. We could go for the entry mode back to back, but I'm not going to do that. I think it's time to take a well-earned break. We have a couple things we need to take care of, but there lies the arc of the entry modes. I'm going to keep the Dragon Spear for like one raid probably just to test it out because the thing I'm most nervous about is the core phase in Wardens because the Fang has a way higher max hit, but it's also a five tick weapon compared to the spear that's a four tick. So I'm not sure if having the extra max hits from this is gonna compensate for like how slow it is on the core. I'll do like some test runs and I might end up alking the Dragon Spear after like a couple raids, but until then I'm gonna hold on to it, but we have the Fang now. I'm excited to get into normal mode rating, but there is a couple of things we need to do because normal modes are a lot harder than entry modes. And one of the things I want to do is make a gear upgrade. I think that before we get back into rating, I want to get my crafting up to 84 so I can make myself a black dragon hide body. So I think I'm going to go death storage in TOA and then just start AFKing some silver and making them into tiaras. Just going to load up my suicide invocations, which is nothing but hardcore run so I can just step in and step out part of me is like incredibly nervous to die in here and risk losing the fang but i know that's not how it works but you know scary either way sweet and uh now i can take the stuff out of here and i'm 100 percent gonna be taking the fang and the ring out of here because if i lost these i don't know what i would do so i'm gonna grab my black pickaxe right here and i'm gonna hold on to this baby so i don't get the you know, spoilers of showing off the fang to anybody that walks by. I'm not too concerned about, like, spoiling it for somebody, but, you know, if I don't have to, I'm not going to. And then I'm also gonna, I guess, rock James with me during this mining grind, because he didn't get enough airtime in the last episode, so there you go. Don't say I never did nothing for you guys. And this part is gonna suck pretty bad, because I need to get uh, 9,000 casts of superheat item in order to make this an efficient grind, so... I'm going to be world hopping for quite a bit, just pretty much buying out all of the nature runes and all the fire runes in the world. I need 9,000 nature runes, 
and 36,000 fire runes, so this is gonna take a while. Here we are at our final world hop, and there we have 9,000 nature runes and 36,000 fire runes. That is enough uh, casts of superheat item to get us all the way up to level 84 crafting from doing silver. But yeah, cost us about 2 million coins to buy all these runes, which is fine because obviously I don't need to spend my money on anything anyway. The only thing I really spend my money on ever is runes, so blood runes for the raid, and hopefully, you know, one day I'll spend all of this on <laughs> charging up a shadow of Tumican. but you know what? I'm thinking too far into the future. Let's get this crafting grind started. We're essentially world hopping and mining all the silver in each world until our inventory is full. Then, while walking to the furnace, we cast superheat item on all of the ores to turn them into silver bars. Then we turn all the bars into tiaras, drop them all, and start over again. Before I get any levels from this crafting grind, there is probably one more thing that I want to go over. Uh, we did 138 entry mode KC, obviously, and these are our current stats on the account. I'm going to put up a screenshot of where we were. I took a screenshot of my stats before I actually started my first ever raid on this account, so it's interesting to see the XP and levels that we gained just from doing those raids. The attack level's gone up, the cooking level, the range level is a big one, stuff like that. And I also don't think I showed the collection log. I mean, it's nothing impressive. You already know exactly what it looks like. Uh, Fang and ring and 138 entry mode KC. 88 KC for the ring, 138 for the Fang. Now I think we can officially get started on this. And here we go, guys. The first level of this crafting grind isn't even a crafting level. It's a smithing level. There is 76 we can now make. Uh, I'd say the adamant crossbow is probably the most important thing from here. If I was to ever lose my rune crossbow, we can just get the mahogany logs from Tombs of a Masket and make ourselves an adamant one. And we can still fire the same adamant bolts, which is the whole reason we got the rune crossbow from. So that's kind of cool, but either way, a level's a level. This is a... Kind of convenient, kind of inconvenient. I just grabbed a ninja impling that was flying around the mine, and I got black dragon hides, which obviously, you know, the goal is to get the crafting level to make a black dragon hide body, and there's our dragon hides right there. It's convenient because now we don't have to grind these out um, once we get the level, but it's inconvenient because it is one less silver that we can mine per inventory, so eh, whatever. It's still 22 silvers per inventory compared to 23. I don't think it's that bad in the grand scheme of things. And here's another level coming in, 78 mining. I'm pretty sure that's going to be the only mining level we get from this. We might be able to fit in 79, I'm not sure, but... I'm hoping that this is enough to get us an extra max hit in the Path of Het puzzle, like Akka puzzle. I'm not sure though. Either way, levels are always good to see. And here we go. I've been doing this for a couple days now and it's time to get the first crafting level of the crafting grind. There's 83. I don't think we can make either one of these, but we only have one more level until our goal. So we're getting about 10,000 XP an hour, 10 to 11,000 XP an hour. So yeah, probably like 25 to 30 hours left on this. So yeah, a couple more days. I caught a couple essence simplings while, you know, mining and got some pure essence drops and I even got a runecraft level. Would you look at that? Level 20, I can now craft body runes, except I can't. And we are three levels away from the end goal of rune crafting, which is being able to craft lava runes, so pretty cool. Yo, this is an interesting clip right here. I was already recording because I'm about to get a level, but Dragon Implink, can we get some bones? Oh my god, it's too perfect, you guys. Too freaking perfect. And here is that level I was talking about, 87 magic. You love to see it. Can I enchant Onyx stuff? Hey, that might be useful for Mage Training Arena in the enchantment room, who knows. And we have another level coming in right here. That is 21 runecraft. Okay, so I was just doing some silver mining like I've been doing, and a freaking lucky impling flies by. What are the odds? Is this going to be a big upgrade? 10 law runes. That sounds about right for lucky implings, honestly. What the hell? This is literally like 10 minutes later and another lucky impling in the mine. I don't know what's going on right now. Maybe the last one was just a tease, and this one is the one with the good drop. A willow longbow. This is... Oh, luckies are dead content, I swear to God. All right, I missed uh, getting this level, but, you know, I didn't click away. It's still right here. 79 mining. Uh, probably the last level that we're going to get before we're done with this, because we're getting kind of close 
to 84 crafting here. Um, that's also 1750 total on the Desert Locked UIM, which means we don't have access to a whole new type of worlds, the 1750 worlds. At long last, took us about a week, maybe a week and a half of doing this, but there it is, 84 crafting. We can now make black dragonhide armor. I don't know why it says black dragonhide armor, black dragonhide body. Again, I'm kind of glad that I got this black dragonhide. I got a ton of them from Implings that I've been catching. So let's just go ahead and unnote these, tan them into black dragon leather. And here we go, black dragonhide body unlocked on Dune Lord. New best in slot range top. Aw oh, yeah, look at this beast. You know, it's obviously going to look a little bit better with the rest of the armor, but, you know, it's still there. And that's all the leathers turned into bodies. I've just been alking the excess ones because they actually alk for like 8,000 coins. Just going to make these black dehyde van braces just so I can say that I've worn full black dragon hide on this account from scratch. But the combat bracelet is going to be better than this, so these are also going to get alked. But look at that, dude. It's going to feel so good to be reunited with my gear after all this time. So... In that time where I was uh, crafting, getting my level up for this brand new black dragonhide body, I had some time to think, do some research, talk to some people, whatever, and I realized that I don't need a couple items anymore. And uh, we're gonna get rid of those right now. Uh, these are gonna hurt, but you know, it has to be done. We gotta clear some inventory space up for the raids. The Fang, now that we have it, it actually replaces two items and i think you can tell which ones they are by looking at our inventory uh, the fang is going to make the dragon spear obsolete and even the breach of the scarab obsolete um the accuracy bonus from this doesn't really matter too much compared to the fang especially in normal modes the dragon spear obviously just made obsolete by the fang the one difference was or the one thing that i thought i'd need to keep the spear for was is the fact that it's four ticks so i thought that during the core phase we would need a four tick weapon over a five tick weapon just because we can attack faster. Maybe it equals more damage or something. But apparently if I just use all the specs that I can get from the Fang on the core, then it should be totally fine. We'll still get a four down. It won't turn into a five down or something like that. Plus with the light bear, we'll be using so many specs. It'll just be ridiculous. We'll be shredding that core. So uh, we're going to say goodbye to an incredibly sentimental weapon, the Dragon Spear Poison Plus Plus. You know, got us through a good Calify Queen grind. Got us the pet. I think this is the, the spear that got us the pet. But yeah, we're going to high alk it. Goodbye. You served us very well. And then we're also going to alk the Breach of the Scare. This one doesn't hurt as much. But, you know, we can still get this one back very easily. A lot e more easily than the spear, that is. So, uh, yeah. I'm sure we'll see this one again pretty soon. But it is gone as well. And since we're doing normal modes instead of entry modes, we're going to drop our two lower tiers of arrows. So instead of using the adamant arrows, we're just going to main the rune arrows. And instead of using mithril bolts, we're just going to main the adamant bolts and the ruby bolts. So we just cleared up a ton of inventory space. So now we can get started with the raids. Reporting live from the grouping obelisk, I guess is what it's called. Um, we can check the invocations that I have set for myself. So this is what we're doing for 150s. We're gonna stick to softcore run because I just don't like spending 45 minutes in a raid and then having it be a wipe. Even if the purple chance is worse from dying, I'd rather just finish the raid if I'm being honest. Work towards those KC capes and all that. So softcore run is on. One of the noticeable differences is we used to have overly draining on, which, you know, drains 100% of our spec energy every time we use a spec. But now that we actually have a special attack weapon being the Fang, especially paired with the Light Bearer, um, that would be super terrible to have it drain our special attack every time we use this is off. We have these three Kefri ones on, Aerial Assault, uh, Blowing Mud, and Lively Larvae. I think you should probably know what these are by now, so moving on. We have Feeling Special on. Uh, this one's great for solos because essentially the only thing it does is it makes the little memory game thing in the middle um, faster, which I already know how to react to because I do this on my main. And it just makes the raid faster, honestly. So there's no point to not put it on. It just means less time for me to switch my gear while the memory game is going on. But that's fine. That one should be free. But watch me die to it. <laughs> uh, we have Shaking Things Up on from Baba just like last time. None of the other ones. And then we have... Overclocked 1, Overclocked 2, and Insanity on, which this is probably going to be the most intense one. I am used to doing Insanity on my main. Uh, it will probably be a little bit harder on Dune Lord, especially because we'll be meleeing the last phase with the Fang, but it pretty much just makes everything way faster, and every mistake is a lot less forgiving. But we'll get more into that later. And then I also have Penetration on, which just makes the Obelisk attacks more damage, I think, which I should be dodging those anyway. So, yeah, a lot of these are just kind of like 
They're mechanically a bit more difficult, but technically they don't increase like the damage at all. We're brought up to raid level 150, which is in normal modes, and this is what we're gonna be doing. Here's our gear setup, here's our inventory. Let's do it. Let's enter normal mode TOAs for the first time on the account. About to go into Kefri right now. Um, I don't think there should be anything too different about this room. We're using the Fang instead of the Blue Partisan, so the accuracy should still be really good here. Probably even better than the Blue Karis. The main difference in all of these bosses is that since we're in a 150, they're all like scaled a lot higher. So they have higher health, higher defense, higher damage they deal. It's, uh, it's just gonna be a lot harder, so I gotta be on my freaking A game. We did bring a pair of potion. Uh, we stopped bringing pair of potions in entry mode because I was like, I got the pair flicking down, but I figured I'd start bringing pair of potions again because, um, you know, there might be a bit of a learning curve for normal modes. So we'll just see how it goes. We'll get in there and try it out. This Fang is so accurate, man. I haven't missed, I don't think, this entire fight so far. There's one thing I'm interested in. Once this phase goes down, it summons the Mage Scarab and the Healer Scarab right here. This is the Healer one. Normally what I do is I keep the Healer alive and I just out DPS the damage that he's able to heal. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do that in normal modes or not. So I'm just gonna try keeping him trapped like that and not damaging him and see if that actually does anything. And it looks like I need to drink a Prayer Potion dose. I was getting pretty close to doing this whole fight without drinking a Prayer Potion, so. I feel like we can get this optimized a little bit better. And Kefri is dead in normal modes. I was easily able to like out damage the heals from the melee one. I think if I was doing like expert modes or something like higher than 150s, I'd probably have to do some damage to it or kill the melee one. But I don't know. The Fang is so accurate that I'm just shredding Kefri and yeah, it doesn't even seem to matter anyway. So on to Zebek. Perfect. Krondis combat task completed on that one. I'll take it. So this is the first room or the first boss fight where things really change because I will be mailing Zevak. And um, this is for a couple reasons. One, uh, this is gonna save so much on supplies because I feel like this is where most of our bolts go is in the Zevak fight. And with the Fang being so accurate, um, I feel like it's just gonna be beneficial because we're just gonna shred Zevak. The only thing is, it's gonna be a little bit difficult because we still have to be like prayer flicking and he has this big powerful chomp attack that will like really do damage to us if we get caught by it. So we just need to kind of, I don't know, I'll show, I'll show you. I've never actually attempted this before, so this might go bad, <laughs> but yeah, we'll see how it goes. Oh, I got chomped, I got chomped, I did that wrong. I think it's something like, even if you get meleeed, you don't inherently like take bleed damage from Zebak. Um, it's only if you're like in front of him for a certain amount of tiles or something like that, but if we flinch him just like we were doing, we shouldn't take any of the bleed damage if we don't mess it up like I, like I just did, obviously. See, so I just took a melee damage there. It was a zero, but um, I didn't get chomped. So that's the main problem is getting chomped. Getting meleeed is fine, getting chomped is bad. And now he just started his enrage phase, so his attacks are gonna get a lot faster. And it's essentially the same thing, just pray against his attacks, the same way you normally would, but it's just a little bit faster. Or if you're good on your prayer points up to this, you can probably just hard camp the prayers. You don't even have to worry about prayer flicking. And there we go. That kill was um, a lot longer than using range. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll get better at that by the more we do it, but the one thing I know for sure is we barely use any bolts and we don't even really need to use those bolts. So we're kind of exchanging how long the fight is for conserving supplies, which I think is a fair trade-off because we have to spend a lot of time at uh, Locust Riders to stack supplies. And if we have to do that like, you know, four times as often or four times as rare, I should say, then I think it's an even trade-off for like an extra minute or two in the fight. So yeah, Melee Zebek is the method. And now we can get our first supply. We haven't used a single piece of food yet. Which brings me to my next point. Um, normal mode loot is a lot worse than entry mode loot. So let's see. Yeah, look at that. So we have two tears, five brews, an ambrosia, and a smelling salt in chaos. Which actually I think this is a pretty good chaos, like better than normal. But I think that the meta is normally to do life and then chaos or something like that. Because we're normally going to be doing Akka and Baba unsalted for normal modes which is uh, kind of unfortunate, but we just don't get enough salts to 
have every room salted. We need the salt for wardens, but we don't need them technically for Aka and Baba, so. So I think normally we pick life and then chaos, but I think I'm gonna pick chaos first this time, just because of the ambrosia and the fact we still have two tiers and assault. I think we're gonna pick this one first. And uh, we're gonna head into Aka now. It looks like those mining levels that we got from the tiara grind, uh, they did not give us an extra max hit. We're still hitting sevens as our max. I haven't seen an eight yet, and I don't think it's gonna happen. Ladies and gentlemen, we have made it to Akka. So the things to note about this fight is that we are not gonna be using salts here, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. We have feeling special on, which I'll definitely get a clip of that. It just speeds up the memory thing in the middle. And uh, besides that, I don't really know if there's too much that has changed. I'll still be prayer flicking. I'll still be doing all that. The only difference is we got the fang. We're not salted. We got a faster memory. Yeah, I think that's kind of it. So let's give it a shot, I suppose. Okay, here we go. Watch how fast this is. Not too bad. All right, so I'm super low on health. I'm going to use the Karis Partisan spec. Oh, yeah, dude. That's what I'm talking about. I still got that up my sleeve whenever I may need it. Here we go. Wish me luck. Easy peasy, dude. Good first raid so far, no deaths. 150, raid level 150 is a freaking piece of cake. I say before I go into the hardest room. <laughs> Let's try this out. All right, I'm getting destroyed here. Um, Definitely gonna need to sun partisan spec. That was a little ridiculous. And maybe the light bear will bring my spec up enough to where I can use the sun partisan spec twice in this room if I need to, because it also restores or clears venom, which is very nice. Okay, that's the room completed. That was pretty bad. Uh, we ended up going through a lot of prayer potion. In fact, that was our last prayer dose right there. And we still need to do Baba, which is another reason why it's good that I'm bringing in this emergency prayer potion, because I'm definitely going to need it for the next fight. I do have an Ambrosia, though, but eh, I feel like I'd rather save that for Wardens. I don't know how that fight's going to go quite yet. So for the Baba fight, I don't think there's really going to be any difference, like, for the mechanics or how I do the fight, except for the fact that this Fang is absolutely going to tear through her. I'm hoping that with the Adamant Bolts and the Rune Crossbow and with Eagle Eye on, that I'll still be able to one-shot the damaged boulders, even without being salted. But I guess we will find out, won't we? So let's get in there and try it out. And it is a one-shot. We're good. Can I do it without Eagle Eye on? Oh my god, I don't even need Eagle Eye on for the Adamant Bolts. I do for the Mithril Bolts, but not for the Adamant Bolts. Dropping all my specs here. I'm shredding. And Baba's dead. It was a kind of close fight, but you know what? We still did it. First normal mode raid, and we get to Wardens with no deaths. I think that's pretty impressive. We check the Helpful Spirit, and we pick Life, because we need these prayer potions bad. And we get two Ambrosia. Man, this is going to be too easy. Yeah, dude, we got three Ambrosias, plenty of prayer potions, a ton of brews. I think we're going to be fine. I switched to my Black Dragon Hide body. Yeah, I'm going to salt after the pillar phase, so let's get started. One more hit should do it. One more good hit. There we go. And now we just do this all like normal. Almost forgot to salt. Don't mind the fact that I misclicked an Ambrosia dose, but... We're coming up on the core phase in about a minute here. And the number one thing to note is that I need to be tick perfect. I can't miss any ticks on this. And I need to get four Fang specs off in the first phase or else I'm gonna have to do a five down. The goal is to keep this like a four down like I'm used to. Getting it to a three down isn't realistic, but you know, making it a five down will be terrible. So we'll see how this core phase goes when I get there. Specs ready. The reason it's important to hit the specs is because the specs increase our max hit by a lot with the fang, and we always hit our max hit on the core, so otherwise we'd be hitting 37s instead of 43s. All right, this is the end of the fourth down right here, so let's see if this is good enough to, you know, get a four down. Can we get one more hit? B, no, 10, hit, 10 left. Oh, thank God we got it, okay. Very nice, so it looks like we still maintain the four down, which is very nice. 
And another big change that's coming here is, first of all, we're in insanity mode now. Everything here is going to be a lot faster. Also, I'm going to be meleeing this phase because the accuracy here is probably better than the bolts. I don't know. And in rage phase just started, so I'm gonna dump all my specs with my fang. And then, yeah, just wish me luck. There it is, first normal mode, Tombs of a Mask at KC. Two elite combat tasks done. 64 minute raid. <laughs> Man, now this is it. In case any of you guys doubted I'd ever be here, this was the real Casey. This is the one that mattered. Oh man, feels good, feels good. We are not rewarded with a purple, but let's check the board before we get our loot. Seven and a half minute Akka, that's actually pretty quick. 16 minute Wardens, average. Zero deaths, 8600 damage. Very nice, very nice. And from the chest, we get 481k. I mean, this is all just drops to the main because I don't really need money on this account. But uh, yeah, very cool, very cool. Now this is where the purple chances get good. So when we start grinding out this raid, we're going to see some purples pretty soon. With Osmumpton's Fang finally acquired and a normal mode Tombs of a Mask at KC under our belt, that is where I'm going to end it for today. This was a huge accomplishment. The goal for the account was to defeat this raid, and we just did it. Now all that's left is to grind out some purples. The next episode will be a ton of raids, so I hope you're excited for that. Also, this is kind of random, but they just added the dragon pickaxe to the Calphite Queen drop table, and I've been debating going back there to see if I get lucky, since it'll help speed up the Path of Het puzzle. And also, the Fang will be amazing for both phases of this fight. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments, plus it'll be interesting to see who made it this far in the video. And while you're down there, don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe, because it really helps my channel grow. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Also, a big shout out to all the channel members. In the Dune Legends tier, we have Ia and Musha. In the Dune Lords tier, we have Icarus, Jacob P, Grim Zoso, Humorbot, Josh Funderberg, and Hard Rock Gamer. And in the Dune Lads tier, we have Cannon, Weirdo, Nick Fade, Kai, Bash T, and The Corf. Thank you all for the support, and if you'd like to learn more about channel membership, click the join button down below by the subscribe button. Thank you all, and see you guys next time.